And we are back on Open Line Check Along here with attorney Kevin Kennedy from the Kennedy Law Firm. I'll tell you what, we have had so many callers, got great information. You've been giving some, wow. you've been some on fire great, tonight with, the, great with these questions. Advice. Yeah, tonight. absolutely. He's kind of following up on the diplomatic citizenship. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, really, if you really wanted to pursue that, usually it's for isolated circumstances. Perhaps you're doing some personal work for the government, and perhaps sometimes they've used it where people can speak foreign languages, such as Farsi or something else, to go in for a particular purpose uh, for the government. So you'd have to make your application be approved and uh, take that. All right, well, good to know. All right, back to the lines, and again, we appreciate the patience. We've had a lot of callers, and we want to make sure we get to as many as possible. So if you do have a question or comment, make sure you give us a call as soon as possible at 737-7587. Linda, we do appreciate your patience. We're glad that you called in. Do you have a question or a comment? Yes, I do. I am going to have to refile this small claim that was dismissed. I called earlier and okay. talked about it. And I want to know, do I have to file in that same court since it's, you know, or can I file, say, because that was in Davidson County, can I file in Rutherford County? Or what would you suggest? Well, really, here's the two things you need to determine right off the bat. Once you file in that county, that county has jurisdiction, so it's not just a refile, it's an appeal. Now, again, sometimes people can take a non-suit, and then you can refile again, and uh, there could be an argument used against you that's called race adjudicata. And if they got a lawyer, they may come back and say, Judge, we've already been to court on this. The issue is settled. So I would try to pursue and see if you're within your appeal time, and then you could appeal it right onto the circuit court and trial de novo. Okay, so we appreciate that call, Linda. Have a great evening. Going back to the lines right now, Kelly is on the line with us. Kelly, good evening. Do you have a question or comment? I do. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, we always enjoy listening to you. You're so kind. Thank you. I'm, I'm happy to say I have no legal issues to deal with, never have. Praise the Lord for that, brother. You know, there's an old saying, they say, may your life be filled with many lawyers. That's when they're aggravated. And you know, Bob lived a life full of lawyers. So go right ahead, but I, I appreciate those comments. Yes, sir. Uh, I heard you a few months ago talk about uh, being a history major and a history buff. You are listening good. I have a master's yep. degree in history. That's right. I taught at the university. I should have stayed in the history, and then I wouldn't have been involved in all this. But go ahead. Well, I'm interested to get your opinion on something. Okay. As you know, in the 18th, 19th century, um, it was considered unethical for lawyers to solicit their services. Yes. Uh, that has changed in modern times. I'm just curious to see what your opinion is on why that's change yeah and how do you feel about that change well here's the real world you know they used to say that you can't go and solicit they called lawyers in my early career that would do the ambulance chasers and there is a place that we should not go out and try to stir up there is an equally good argument you say I don't know who to talk to listen to all the people tonight that are trying to find a lawyer to get some help well you know if we didn't have some kind of service that we could refer or inform the public many people would go without representation so my professional opinion is the more you know the better off we all are and they say, well, what about that well he's a real estate lawyer he doesn't do that and you said well they are a personal injury lawyers they perhaps can help Help us. And the truth is, just like shoe salesmen, some people may know all about tennis shoes, some may know all about boots, some may know about dress shoes. So what is your particular situation? And with a the lawyer, they can help you. All right. And Kelly, again, we're glad that you've been watching. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm a big advocate of cameras in the courtroom for 30 years. So many lawyers said, don't let these cameras in. I said, let the cameras in. Let the children learn. Let the public see what happens. How do we learn? You know, the trouble with the system right now is, you know, we, we're supposed to know how to conduct ourselves when we go to court. You never had that in school. And so in my office, you know, we have what's known as the court of creativity. I did make a difference, Chuck. We built the largest private courtroom in the state, and we brought in thousands of students and put on mock trials. So they've learned early, and many, I remember telling them, I said, y'all have been trained better than so many others because someday your family will be affected with this. 
I'll tell you, you were talking about history and that you actually taught and that sort yes. of thing. I love history. And, and that's terrific. But I'm glad that you also got in the legal field <laughs> because we would be missing a lot without you. You know, so. the truth is everybody these lost and said, Kevin, what do we study? And uh, history will teach you a lot from all these brilliant minds. Mm -hmm. And so I love history. History will repeat itself. And if you make mistakes, you're going to have to learn from them. And what I love to teach, learn from others' mistakes. That's the best way to do it. All right, back to the lines right now. Once again, uh, Rod is on the line with us. Rod, we're glad that you're uh, here this evening. Do you have a question or a comment? I do. Go, okay, ahead. go ahead. I had a tenant that owed me back rent, and I filed a judgment against her, went to court, they got one payment out of her and she filed bankruptcy. Is that yes. legal? Yes, they can file bankruptcy. And I talk to people, landlords and uh, tenants, and it's becoming very, it's always a hot subject. But the truth is, you can say, they go in there, rent your home, they tear it all up. You say, well, I'm going to own those people. Well, you can sue them. We can go to court. We put up on the stand. Did you pay for to have it painted? Yes, 1200 Did you put new carpet in? Because they, yes, that was 6000 Judge, we want a judgment for $12,500. we have got it. Well, they're working at Walmart, so we issue a garnishment and start making them make their payments. And then they go to a lawyer and file. I remember early in my career, I had this lawyer, and he's very experienced. And I said, you're not going to get anything out of this man. You're going to have a hard fight, and I don't think you can win, but if you did win, you will get the green card. He said, the green card, he didn't understand. I was a young lawyer, but when a dumb, I said, that's the bankruptcy card that you can't do anything. And so it went through, and he did win that case, and then he got the, and he says, I didn't think you could do that. Well, I'm telling everyone today, you can do it. All right, things that uh, you can find out when you're watching. Rod, we're glad that you were watching this evening. Thank we you for that question. It. Absolutely. Now we're going to uh, Christy. Christy, we're glad that you're with us this evening. Uh, what's your question? Yes, okay, yes, sir. I have a workers' comp thing going on where I okay. injure my foot at work. Yes, ma'am. And they're denying it, so I guess I'm going to have to get my attorney. Yes. But this last Sunday, I stepped off the sidewalk at a big shopping center. I don't know if it's in the parking lot. They was a little... Okay, I'm going to stop you out. right there for a sec because I'm looking after you. If you have a workers' comp claim... You need to talk to a lawyer before you make any statements because somebody would misinterpret whatever your problem is. So again, I don't mean to cut you off, ma'am. I'd love to answer your question, but professionally, I think it would be in your best interest to talk to a lawyer before you said a whole lot. Okay, well, so that's good to know. And again, that's why it helps to have yes, that legal advice. Yes. So, Christy, and we wish you the best. Absolutely. See so, a lawyer. Again, see the lawyer. That is the best advice. All right, on to the uh, lines. Jeffrey is on the line with us. Jeffrey, we're glad that you called Hi. in this evening. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, I want to ask, uh, I inherited a house back in uh, 2016, and I have a will. And yep. I haven't been through a probate on it yet. Yep. I'd like to know, uh, is it too late to go through a probate on it? No, or not. Do I have to do that? No, not at all. People uh, pass away and they'll have that. You go and probate the will. All right. Excellent question. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. All right. We are back on the lines. Live lines lit up. Linda is on the line with us. He's Linda. rolling with these lines. I tell tonight. you, thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate the patience. Do you yes, have a question? Yes. Uh, I've got a statement and then a question. All right, go uh, ahead. When he said something about he uh, wanted cameras in the courtroom, yes, I tell you, Channel 5, with all of their courtroom uh, coverage, coverage has enlightened me more than anything. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, and then secondly, Thank you for uh, that. I have a neighbor who is uh, not a very nice neighbor and had to call the police on several times for threatening. Mm. And uh, they've got a lot of trees that are hanging over in my yard. I Can hear you. I legally have those trees cut without having to talk to them. Okay. Because I have been told by the police do not have any contact verbally or anything with them. You are what's dancing a jig. They say, Kevin, what are you doing? Dancing a jig. <laughs> it's interpretation. Now, there's a good legal argument if those limbs were over on your side that you control that and you could trim the trees on your side. You also, if you've got a hard-headed neighbor, he is begging for the opportunity to sue you for something. And what just happened with the police? 
Their interpretation is don't talk to them because you cannot breach, breach the peace because that could be considered harassment or criminal trespass if your man got on their side of the fence to cut the tree. It's very delicate. So what I would tell you to do, ma'am, I would talk to a lawyer privately, let them explain to you the pros and cons, and then you together make a decision of a course of action. All right, good to know. Now, Linda brings up a good point, though, because we often get a lot of calls, people talking about a neighbor. Come uh, on. You know, and there may be a problem. How do you yes. deal with it? How do you keep the peace, but at Come the same on. time? So, Protect your right. Yeah. At the law school, they used to say, never get into a boundary dispute because that will never get away. They also said the old... Uh, said good fences make good neighbors and you know over the years I bought lots of farms and you know what Kevin Kennedy would always do well I learned have it surveyed immediately and have it fenced immediately and if I knew that there was a property line dispute over here I didn't want to buy that farm because it really wasn't worth it to have all the problems with your neighbors so again I like to talk privately and uh, but I agree Try, you know, the Bible says try to get along with everyone. I believe that Bible cover to cover and try not to have to take your neighbor to court. But a proactive approach uh, is not a bad idea. I've run the fence many times real early and the fence is done. Yeah. And so that's that's the Kevin Kidney approach. All right, good advice. We do need to uh, take a short break. Another break, got, Chuck. That's right. I tell you, it's going fast tonight. If you do have one of those questions or comments, make sure you get online with us as quickly as possible. There's the line on your screen, 737-7587. Short break, more open line right after that.